Hey, welcome to Cheaper Jeeper TV, the show that helps you get the most for your money so that you get the most for your Jeep. I'm Dino, your host. Glad to see you here. On this week's episode, due to subscriber request, we're going to do an update video on the Chinese diesel heater. We're going to talk about the pros and cons. We're going to talk about some new design improvements. And then we're going to go really crazy and talk about some other installation options. So stick around. Well, if there's ever a time to need a diesel heater, it's about now because it's minus 20, but with the wind chill, it's minus 30. So I actually am looking forward to getting into the Jeep. But before we do, let's have a look at the construction of the diesel heater. So at first glance, this design looks like a simple way, an efficient way to design a heater in a box. You've got a nice case right here. You've got the large fuel tank connected to the side. There's some venting for the box. On this side, you have a port for your power, which is weatherproof. There's your air intake that's gonna get heated and then brought into the Jeep. And then this is the fresh air intake for the combustion. And then on this side, you have your hot warmed air to go to your Jeep. And then this is the exhaust port from the combustion. It has quick disconnects here. So when you're attaching your duct work, you could just quickly snap it on and run your ductwork to your tent or your Jeep. And I even had one to carry the exhaust out a little further and I used four inch ducting for this application. On the inside, this fresh air could go down this way. On the inside, you've got your power cables which run to your battery. And then down below here is your exhaust pipe that you just attach to this end right here to carry the exhaust for combustion out that way. So you've got your air intake for combustion coming this way. It goes into the intake for combustion. You have your power to the unit coming in through this weatherproof plug right here and then plugged into a Jackery battery that way. And then the combustion occurs in this chamber and the combustion gases are carried out this pipe out in that direction. large fuel tank came with the unit and you can see here it's attached to the case. Large vents were installed to provide ventilation for the case. There's the combustion exhaust pipe going out that way and the combustion intake pipe coming in this way. That's the fresh air intake on this side of the box and then this is where the fresh warm air comes out. And I made this adapter where it goes into the Jeep. I used 4 inch flexible tubing to connect to the adapter with quick connects here at the Jeep end and then also at the heater end and then you can see I have a weatherproof electrical connection to run the wires from the heater into the Jeep. And here in the Jeep is where I keep my Jackery to run the unit as well as the thermostat controller. Oh. Okay, oh. Man, it's cold out there. Okay, that's nice and warm air coming in. And before I start talking about the diesel heater, let's first talk about safety. You've probably seen these. These are carbon monoxide alarms. And the way these work is once that the carbon monoxide in the room reaches a certain level, the alarm will go off. But in the meantime, you've been breathing in low amounts of carbon monoxide and you'll be breathing it in, but it hadn't reached that level. That's where something like this, which is a carbon monoxide monitor, which monitors the level of carbon monoxide. And I think I picked this up for 40 bucks on Amazon. I'll have the link in the description. And when I'm using the diesel heater, I always want to make sure I test the air like this, just in case there might be a leak in the diesel heater. If you look at this clip right here, I show you with the diesel heater taken apart, 
the little rubber seal that you see is where the glow plug is and that seal is a potential source of a leak when that seal perhaps dries up and cracks you might get some carbon monoxide leaking through that and then cold air blowing past it to go over the heated part of the chamber the carbon monoxide would be carried through there and then into the room similarly where you see this metal gasket in the heater if that should crack that could be another source of a leak so even though your design may have all the right things to it there's those potential areas where there could be a leak in the system and that's why it's important to have one of these the alarm for sure that'll go off when the levels are too high but to even know that there's a potential problem at hand I like the monitor. You can see here how I'm using the carbon monoxide monitor in the house and you can see that the monitor is showing there's no carbon monoxide in the house and then we take it outside and you can see again that there's no carbon monoxide outside and now let's take it in the Jeep and put the carbon monoxide monitor just where the heat is coming out of the heater into the Jeep to see if there's any carbon monoxide coming out of that. So you can see where the heat's coming into the Jeep from the diesel heater, there is no trace of any carbon monoxide. But just to see if this is even working, let's now take the carbon monoxide monitor to the exhaust port from the diesel heater and see what the results are. And as you can see, the carbon monoxide numbers go up to the point where it actually sets off an alarm. As we walk away from the diesel heater, the carbon monoxide level returns back to zero. So this is a handy little tool to have. Having said all that, I'll also have a link uh, to some other resources about carbon monoxide because you want to be safe when you're dealing with this. Okay, let's first talk a little bit about what I like about the diesel heater. Well, when we're winter camping and you need some place for shelter, this diesel heater does a great job at providing ample heat so you could rest and hang out in the Jeep on your sleeping camping platform, for example, to read or just relax or eat. But also, if you have a room tent like we have, and a splitter on the ductwork for the diesel heater, we could run heat to both the Jeep and the tent, and there's enough heat that comes from the heater to keep both of those places warm, the inside of the Jeep, as well as the tent room. So we're very happy with how the heater is performing in that respect. Also, it's been very reliable. I'll put a link to a bunch of tutorials on how these heaters are designed to work. And I just watched that and I understood how to operate the diesel heater and have it set up and avoid some of the pitfalls. So with the unit designed the way it is, it's been working flawlessly. Plus the unit is very fuel efficient. And using the Jackery 500 lithium battery is also a nice strong part of the system because with the Jackery 500, it's ample power to get you through a weekend. And if you have solar powers, you could recharge the solar battery that way. Or even if you're driving around during any point of the trip, then the battery could be recharged by the vehicle. But what's nice with the Jackery is that it has the screen on it so you can see how much power you have left because one very important point that you want to be careful of is that you don't run out of battery when the diesel heater is running because there's a fan that's always blowing the fresh cool air over the burn chamber and should that stop suddenly then the heat buildup in the burn chamber will uh, cause some damage to your diesel heater. So having the Jackery with a display that lets me know that I have ample power left is also a nice part of this system. So I really like how the whole unit functions. It does the trick. It's very convenient to have. Now what I'd like to do is talk to you about some of the cons. The large fuel tank on the back is more than you need. So you're carrying that extra weight. A tank half this size would do. And then the muffler being housed inside the box actually doesn't work out to be that great of an idea after all. I did seal it with high temperature exhaust sealant, but still um, there's going to be leaks. 
There's even a vent hole at the bottom of the muffler, which um, I was worried was going to be a problem, but the flow of air goes straight through the muffler and out that the condensation doesn't tend to build up there, but still it doesn't really feel like a great idea to have that in there. So another point of improvement is to remove the quick disconnects and not use those, but just use three inch hose clamps and use three inch duct work because that will work and it'll take up less room because believe it or not, all that four inch tubing and duct work tends to take up some space. Now the box has large vents at the bottom and top to help convection of air. But from doing temperature testing with a digital thermometer, when this is running at full blast, you could put your hand on this. It's just like warm. And the temperature readings I got were like in the high 20s, low 30s when this is going full bore. So if you didn't have a metal box, but you want to use a plastic box, it's okay. In fact, this is plastic. So when they engineered this, they knew with the cold air coming through and going over the fans and then immediately going out that the hot air from the combustion chamber wouldn't heat up this plastic enough to be an issue. So that's a good thing to know. If you're looking for a case, it doesn't have to be metal. Well, that's about it for the pros and cons. What I want to show you now is some design improvements that I have in mind and Although this video won't have the construction of this concept because the parts haven't yet arrived, that'll be in the next video. So if you're interested in seeing the construction of the design concept I'm about to discuss, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that episode. So let me show you on the computer the design concept and the parameters of this design that I have in mind. So instead of having the heater in the middle of the case with the ductwork going down, I intend to have the heater at the bottom of the case sitting right on the bottom with the exhaust sticking out the side. So I'll run the exhaust out this way, the cold air intake out that way when I'm using it, and when I'm not using it, I put them away. When the unit's ready for transport, all I'll have would be just the case because this will be in the lower half and the new fuel tank will be in the upper half. Here's a sketchup of the idea and it's good to be aware that you'll need a little extra space for the fuel lines, fuel filter and fuel pump. And also with this orientation of the items, the fuel tank has the cap on the top so your case will have to open from the top so that you could fill up the tank. And when scoping out cases, you'll have to be cognizant of the measurements of the two main units being the heater and the gas tank. So you can see here that the length of the heater from end to end is 15 inches and the height with this orientation is five and a half inches and the width with the base where the exhaust port and the intake ports are is six inches. The height of the 5.5 liter gas tank is seven inches taking into account the cap the width is five and a half inches and the length about 12 inches. I say about because different vendors quote slightly different measurements. This case from Princess Auto has measurements that will allow the unit to just barely fit in where the exhaust and intake sleeves will just fit through the case. So you start with the diesel heater with the exhaust ports oriented to the side and then slip it into the case. Then take your 5.5 liter gas tank and fit it on top of that. And now you see there's some room left for your fuel pump and fuel filter and the wiring, and you can store the intake and exhaust tubes when in transit. The three inch ductwork could be stored separately. Add a weatherproof vent on the top of the case, and what you have here is a very convenient unit which you'll be able to pack and transport quite easily. An alternative is this case from Amazon, the link which will be in the description, which has a flat orientation versus a vertical. Here are the dimensions, which shows it has ample space to house our units. So you take your diesel heater, orient it with the ports to the side, and put it into the case. Then you take your 5.5 liter fuel tank and then also add that next to the heater in the case. There will be ample room to transport your extra tubes that you're carrying and don't forget to put a weatherproof vent in the lid. 
and you can see with the lid on the top that you could fill the gas tank when required and the unit always rests in a horizontal fashion which to me gives it a sense of more stability. So those are the two possibilities that I'm looking at right now. Of course it always depends on what cases you have available but with the dimensions and the understanding of what you have to do there are so many options. Of these two options, which of the two appeals to you? Let me know in the comments section below. Of course, this is if you wanted to use a case for all of the pros and cons that having a portable case offers. But what about if you have a crazy idea of perhaps mounting it to your Jeep permanently? Well, here's a few tips on how you could do that. So have a listen. Now for some cheaper Jeeper tips. Okay, I want to talk to you a little bit about the option of mounting the heater in the Jeep. The heater itself isn't really all that heavy, so to mount it permanently in the Jeep might not be that bad an idea. Now, there are a couple of places that you could do this. I saw online a couple of people, they mounted the heater on a shelf right here, and then they ran the exhaust pipe down through the Jeep here into the wheel well when they ran the heater. So. That's a neat spot that you could put it for sure. Another spot that I thought of is to put the diesel heater in this space right here. And the exhaust could go through the floor and out where the tailpipe is. And then the heat duct can just come out of this area and into the cabin. And then finally, another spot where it could be mounted is under the Jeep right here. This is just under the tub in front of the rear differential and you could just put it in a metal box and secure it to the bottom of the tub and then the exhaust could just go out the back and you could run the heating duct into the Jeep either up through the floor or back up through the window the way we're doing it now. The electrical connections could go into the Jeep and the fuel line from either of those positions could be fed through the tailgate hinge to the back of the tailgate and then out through either the vent or any of the grommets and then connected to the fuel tank secured to the back of the Jeep by a variety of means. And now for subscribers tips. This week's subscriber tip comes from last week's video on window coverings for your Jeep for warm weather or cold weather camping. Hey Cheaper Jeeper TV, great idea and I agree it works. I had my window covers wedged into the frame in December. Very strong winds blew one of them away through the mud into the bush. After this unfortunate experience, I will add some suction cups to the panels. For the front window, I don't cover the inside. I use a reflective cover on the outside similar to the Winter Forest 360 magnetic windshield cover from Canadian Tire. Great in the summer heat and winter. The added benefit is a clean windshield in winter when you have to head out in the morning to grab a double-double in a hurry. Signed, Dieter. Hey Dieter, thank you so much for the tip and if any of you have tips that you'd like to share please feel free to put them in the comments section below as they may make it in a subsequent video. Thank you very much. Hey, that's it for this week's episode of Cheaper Jeeper TV. I hope that you found it interesting, and if you did, how about giving the video a thumbs up, and if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any more episodes. Until the next one, I'm Dino for Cheaper Jeeper TV. Be well, stay safe, take care.